So good morning and welcome to today's webinar entitled Simplify Hybrid IT, uh, Powering the Intelligent Edge and Accelerating Your Digital Transformation. Uh, now this presentation has come about uh, as a result of the HP TSS seminar that was held uh, last week, a four day event, which is basically HP's uh, answer to Microsoft uh, Ignite or uh, VMware's VMworld, where they showcase all of their, um, uh, all of their primary technologies, um, up and coming technologies, uh, up and coming use cases. Um, that they see in the uh, in the market now. Obviously, HP are a um, uh, the world's largest server vendor, actually tied top with uh, with Dell. Uh, so when they make predictions uh, when it comes to the world of compute and storage, uh, we tend to we tend to listen. Um, it was a four-day seminar, and uh, what I've attempted to do here is condense that into a, a one-hour presentation, where we cover the main points of what they were uh, were discussing. And the title gives some of it away. A lot of it is based on hybrid IT, and we'll we'll take a look at that in some more detail. But first, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Nick Farina. Um, I'm a senior technical consultant for Ultima Business Solutions. Um, as a service IT and the cloud model has been at the core of what I do for many years now, going back to 1997, before the term cloud computing was even invented, I was employed developing and building desktop to hire solutions with Microsoft Terminal Services and Citrix MetaFrame, centralizing desktop computer, uh, computing for the purposes of gaining visibility on usage patterns and making accurate chargebacks to departments and, and projects. So service based IT uh, has been uh, has been something I, I've been a great advocate of for uh, for some time. Today I help Ultima's customers develop, improve and modernize their data center systems, providing consulting and design uh, as well as going hands on uh, with builds and improvements as well. Over the two years I've worked at Ultima, I've spent hundreds of hours in the company of technical and project leads uh, across a wide variety of industries. I'm very familiar with the day-to-day -day challenges that, that you as IT teams uh, face. Uh, I've heard all the challenges, all the gripes, and also all the wishes and hopes for the future. And in all the webinars I do, including this one, they're very much coloured by the conversations that I have with you when I'm working with you on real life, real life projects. So I, I have some sense of, of relevance here uh, and hopefully it will be useful to you. So going into first slide, let's see whether this works. Here's, a, here's our agenda uh, agenda for today. It's a, it's a loose agenda. Uh, there is quite a bit of quite a bit of overlap here. Firstly and primarily, uh, we're summarizing um, the technologies and services uh, that HP um, were um, portraying as being uh, the most in demand uh, or the most interesting to the marketplace in 2021 and beyond. Um, we're gonna look at the everything as a service model, uh, what that means uh, and why it matters. Um, and bringing the cloud experience to apps and data everywhere. So cloud is no longer new. It's been the watchword in IT for some time now. Uh, AWS Elastic Cloud launched in 2006, uh, but when direct competition came along from the likes of Microsoft, Google, SoftLayer, who later became IBM uh, Cloud, and others were coming into the market were around about 2010. And that's when utility cloud, as we understand it today, really, really took off. So with all the um, distractions we had in 2020, most of us completely overlooked that it's been 10 years now uh, since uh, cloud went mainstream. And while most organizations, 93% at last count, have adopted cloud computing in some form, still over 50% of all corporate data is stored outside the cloud. Uh, and there's a reason for this. Um, and that is obviously that cloud is not a fit for every application and every data item. And companies still want to keep their data, certainly their, their, core, um, their core data, 
close rather than entrust it all to a, to a large corporation. So it's a little surprise that hybrid cloud, which is putting processing workloads, applications in the cloud while keeping a core processing center on-prem or with a colo hosting provider, um, is very much seen as the present and the future by most corporates. When our 71% of all companies said that they had a, a hybrid cloud strategy. Uh, and in this presentation, as I say, we'll look at some of the reasons behind this and discuss terms like data gravity. Um, and as we move into the next 10 years where 5G, the Internet of Things, is going to start playing a, a big part of everything that companies do across most industries, to be fair, the, the need to bring in and aggregate large amounts of, of data is going to explode. Uh, and that's going to happen very soon. Um, um, uh, HPE have recognized that uh, and are in the, uh, are, are stand ready and waiting to uh, help you exploit those opportunities. Um, so uh, the need for an intelligent edge will drive hybridization that is much tighter and much more distributed than what we see today. So what we'll see is the current um, data aggregation uh, that happens out at the edge very much being replaced by additional processing with the need to apply AI to uh, machine learning to the processing of that data. It will no longer be enough just to um, filter and consolidate data. There will need to be intelligent decisions made at the edge as to what data is relevant and needs to be sent to the central processing core uh, and what needs to be filtered out, what needs to be archived for analytics and uh, later study. So even in companies that have an edge presence in the cloud at the, at the moment, there may be a need for additional um, processing capacity out at the edge to facilitate that. And at the edge, cloud and on-prem are going to need to interoperate just as they do in the data center today. We're going to go on to uh, look at HP's hyperconverged infrastructure offerings, and um, uh, we're uh, we're going to look at data protection and DR, and how HP are leveraging the the cloud to give us more options than we've ever had before when it comes to uh, when it comes to protecting, archiving our data, uh, and providing business continuity. Uh, and then we'll finish up. Um, with a, uh, a unique offer that we at Ultima have for you, our customers, that's related to data protection um, and HP's uh, exciting cloud volume service. Uh, so do stay tuned for that. As we go through, um, I'd encourage you to um, uh, ask any questions in the in the questions or chat panel. Uh, I'll stop at. at designated points through the presentation to answer any questions that, that come up. Um, before we go on, um, I'll ask one. How many of you are already using HP uh, equipment in your in your data center or out at the edge? Uh, could I have a, a show of hands for all the current HP users in here? So we've so we've got some we've got a we've got a a, a mixture uh, here. Certainly the uh, the content uh, here is most relevant to those who are running or are planning to run um, uh, HP server storage or uh, or networking in the near future. Um, but uh, um, this may be an opportunity for those running hardware of a different vendor. Uh, to maybe consider HP as their uh, as, as their next um, uh, their next technology on board. So let's have a look. Um, as I say, we're condensing four days of HP Technology and Solutions Summit into uh, into one presentation here, and basically it can be it can be summed up with with one slide. And here we go. Uh, so we're looking at the uh, the three the three different categories of of systems here. So on the left, 
small footprint systems, sometimes run by small organizations, but maybe larger organizations that, that just don't happen to have a, a huge requirement for uh, for IT bricks and mortar type, uh, type operations, uh, or maybe operations that already have most of their IT in the, in the cloud. Uh, and then we have the, the mid-size organizations here, which is typical of, of what we see all the time. Um, uh, setups where you have dual data centers between five and 25 uh, virtualization hosts running 50 to 1,000 uh, VMs, uh, sometimes with supplementary physical servers, mainframes and, uh, and the like um, adding to that. Uh, but this is our typical mid-size operation um, uh, and one that we see all the time. And then going into then the large scale uh, where multiple DCs, usually across multiple uh, multiple territories and countries, um, uh, an edge computing presence already established uh, with over a, a thousand VMs uh, running across the uh, the whole estate. And, and HP have have something for everyone. Uh, and as I say, hybrid cloud is at the heart of everything they're doing at the moment. So um, uh, hybrid cloud pretty much came into every single presentation uh, at the HP TSS. Uh, it was mentioned in, in some form, HP recognize um, that 100% migration to the cloud isn't right for everyone and isn't gonna be right for everyone. And um, uh, all mainstream products, um, are being built with cloud interoperability out of the box uh, to give uh, to give you the customer uh, the choice of where you locate your data and your and your workloads, uh, either on uh, kit from HPE or uh, or in your choice of cloud provider. And everything they're doing with the cloud is cloud provider agnostic. So when we talk about the cloud, we're talking about AWS, uh, Azure or Google Cloud Platform. And in many cases, uh, some of the uh, some of the smaller cloud providers are supported as, as well. But generally, when we talk about public cloud here, we're talking about the three, the three main providers. Um, HP are um, fully backing modern applications, containerized ap applications, uh, in all three um, uh, in all three segments that we see here, and the primary uh, the primary products um, that they were uh, that they were covering were DHCI, uh, DHCI um, and Simplicity, which we'll we'll go into more detail in a later slide. Um, HP Cloud Volumes. Um, the uh, the online data um, storage systems for uh, block and backup that HP provide. HP Infosight, uh, which those of you already running HP will have will have heard of. To many of you, it will be it'll be new. But HP Infosight is a, um, a development where HP are very much ahead of the ahead of the rest of the industry at the moment in drawing in telemetry from customer devices, servers, storage, networking, uh, and compiling uh, a huge um, data lake of information about performance, reliability, uh, and the ability of the hardware to, uh, to meet important customer, uh, customer metrics, uh, which is backed by an AI. Uh, which can be used for proactive proactive support. So if they see a trend in the telemetry coming in from from devices, they can be ahead of the game and already writing patches uh, and hot fixes to address any issues in their in their code, their microcode, um, and actually reach out to customers and head off problems before they happen, uh, rather than being reactive as has been traditionally the the case. Green Lake, I have left until last because um, that was by far and away the most covered subject at the HP TSS and therefore one that we're going to spend a bit of time on today. Um, HP Green Lake is the cloud based consumption model for on prem co located and hosted IT. It, sounds like a, a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful but basically it, it enables 
true hybrid cloud by bringing the usage model to your data center while retaining all of the benefits of running on-prem on-prem or hosted traditional traditional IT the end the end goal being uh, to give us a consistent cloud experience across uh, traditional private cloud on-prem IT and the and the public cloud and enable you the customer to make intelligent decisions about where to locate your workloads according to cost and the standard and the appropriateness of the service that they provide based on where they're located and again we'll go into that in more details later on um, to give you some idea of how significant Green Lake is in HP strategy over 50 percent of the sessions at HP TSS were related to GreenLake and when you consider the huge size of HP's portfolio across networking, servers, storage, integrated computing, mainframe computing, uh, supercomputing services, uh, the fact that they chose to concentrate over half of their content on GreenLake um, gives you some idea of how important it is to uh, to them. So what is it? Uh, how many of you, show of hands again, uh, have heard of Green Lake uh, and already have some understanding of what it is? Okay, so so none of you. Oh, this will this will be likely be uh, uh, an education. Uh, then it certainly was. It certainly was to me. Um, when we go into uh, to designing uh, IT systems in in 2021, uh, the advantages of the public cloud are, are clear. Um, businesses want to want to focus on their business goals and not the IT. Um, they want to maintain liquidity and minimize capex. We'll talk some more about that. Uh, increase agility, and they need to be able to support the modern applications. Um, sometimes that's driven by vendor requirements. Um, sometimes it's driven by um, the uh, uh, strategic direction of internal development functions. Uh, it all depends, but regardless of whether your development function is internal or whether it exists within uh, an ecosystem of software vendors, um, that pressure is is there to move to modern applications such as full containerization, such as uh, DevOps infrastructure as code, um, the advantages of, of applications being able to provision the resources as as they need them. Uh, is driving the, the, the revolution that's currently going on in, in artificial intelligence uh, and machine learning. And that's very much going to continue. Um, and that's all against the backdrop of needing to support more services with the same number of IT, IT personnel. So looking after large amounts of tin uh, is no longer on vogue when the public cloud is sitting there ready and waiting to be uh, an alternative. Um, I'll cover the liquidity thing in a, in a bit of detail because that is massive uh, at the moment. We've been through a very unpredictable couple of years. We've had uh, we've had Brexit, we've had the uh, the COVID pandemic, um, and as a result of these sudden changes in the uh, the operating environment, businesses have had to uh, have had to respond, and that response has cost money. And um, the tendency at the moment within companies is to want to keep uh, their liquidity, to keep cash available to deal with uh, the next unpredictable thing that might that might come along. I mean, we're not out of the pandemic yet. There's all sorts of things that could still that could still happen. Uh, the way in which the um, the way in which people work is still changing. It's still evolving. Um, it's predicted to uh, to continue to do so over the next couple of years as things settle down after the the huge upset we all had in in 2020 um, 
and so having money in the bank is essential to companies to to hedge risk um, and so cash is king and financial directors want to hold on to it um, so clearly in today's marketplace an opex model that spreads out the expense of it in a in a cash flow friendly manner rather than hitting them with uh, hitting them with large hardware and software and services bills all up front um, that are going to eat into their valuable cash reserves is going to be the way to uh, the way to go um, at the same time they, we still need agility we still need to take advantage of new technological developments um, and cloud is again driving uh, driving that uh, but this thing around liquidity is is huge, um, and this is what HP have recognised, and this is why over 50% 50, uh, 50 of their content at TSS was focused on Green Lake because they see it being um, very much the saviour um, for uh, uh, for hybrid IT in the in the coming months and years. So here are challenges that are typically addressed by the by the public cloud are balanced, um, uh, and we can see. Uh, that um, that customers uh, are feeling these these pressures. So this is just the percentage change um, that people put down to the uh, the change in environment due to the pandemic. Um, and you can see that there's a massive um, uh, a massive 46% um, uh, predicted an increase in public cloud and SaaS spending with an 11% um, predicting a significant increase. We look at the, uh, the, the, the top two and SaaS and public cloud is, is predicted to take a, a, a larger slice of the pie when it comes to compute workloads um, over the coming year. And the factors that are driving that um, uh, that are impacting organizations in the in the pandemic obviously the change in working patterns uh, that we just mentioned um, lower revenue and profits which of course is is driving that need for liquidity that we just spoke about the general economic downturn is the is the same and an increased willingness to uh, to move to cloud uh, and lower budgets lower budgets available so the top five priorities that have come out of the COVID-19 pandemic for organizations such as uh, such as yourselves all relate to this need for liquidity and this need to spread IT cost in a cash flow friendly manner in order for the business to be able to weather these pressures and and survive um, so it's it's quite right that that HP should be uh, should be putting some some attention into developing models that that help with this, and it's not just HP. We've got uh, we've got Dell uh, that are offering their version of of GreenLake. We have um, with Cisco doing uh, doing OpenPay. Uh, we have uh, we have IBM doing doing tailored FET. So why why the hybrid? Uh, why not just put everything in the cloud? Well, we have the counter challenges, and these these two columns are pulling against each other, uh, and we as IT are the are the meat in the sandwich. We're stuck in the in the middle of all this. So with all the pressures on the left, um, which are significant as we've just discussed, pulling against that, we have the need to control, secure, and protect data, which is easier to do if you keep your data close. You need to control cost. Um, you need to have predictable costs. Uh, there are a myriad of compliance requirements and industry requirements when it comes to how we secure our data. I mean, in, in addition to the uh, to the pandemic, 2020 saw huge changes in the privacy uh, the privacy landscape. Um, uh, even large companies like Facebook and Google. Uh, are feeling the pressure of this this demand for for more privacy, and with that, it's going to become more compliance requirements. Again, easier to maintain when the data is kept close. Data needs to be continuously available, uh, not on the not necessarily on the end of a, an internet link that might go that might go down. 
um, that data has to be 100% available for the running of the business. We have core applications uh, running uh, industrial and commercial operations um, that even if they're down for 10 minutes, uh, can cost the business tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of, uh, of pounds. Um, so uh, the need to, for continuous availability of applications is, is another huge reason. Maybe, maybe, maybe even the number one uh, behind this girl or a close second to the security of why companies are still choosing to keep 50% of their data on-prem. Um, application performance is critical. Um, in some cases, application vendors demand that the, the applications be run on-prem. They don't support cloud yet. Um, uh, and uh, that is something we hear a lot out in the field. Um, applications need to be able to exchange data. Uh, and that's where we, we get involved in talking about egress charges and the cost of transferring data between those applications, which as we've already discussed, need their data kept close, a performance critical, must be continuously available. You have these pool of applications on-prem. You also have your modern applications in the cloud that are maybe providing services to your customers that are running your edge and, and bringing in data from, uh, from field-based devices and so on. Those applications need to be able to talk to each other and when they're doing it across the public um, public private cloud boundary uh, that can start to build up into a significant cost uh, and those costs are going to get driven ever higher uh, as edge computing becomes more significant and again uh, there's a there's a limited budget for staff retraining supporting cloud-based services is different to supporting on-prem and uh, there's a different tool set to learn uh, in some ways, a completely different way of, of doing things. And in today's hard-pressed environment, just freeing up staff to be able to go on the training courses to learn how to do things in the, uh, in the cloud manner um, is, uh, is difficult. Um, uh, we've, we've adopted a DevOps, DevOps methodology, but devs aren't, aren't IT ops, uh, and they're, they're not familiar with all of the uh, uh, all of the things that they need to do to maintain compliance, to maintain continuous data availability, application performance, and and so on. They're very much functionality focused. Uh, so just turning it over to the devs uh, to look after cloud silos, that's not really an answer either. Centralized centralized control is essential. Uh, if the reliability and performance of systems in the cloud is going to match what we what we run on prem on prem today. Um, so how do we address both these sets of, of challenges at, at once? Um, we have a, a bunch of systems on on prem. We have a bunch of systems out in the cloud. They, as default, end up becoming siloed. They end up uh, with different tool sets managing them. They end up typically with uh, different sets of people supporting them. Uh, often communication is, uh, is an issue. So what if you could have one costing model uh, and one operating environment to look after the, uh, to look after the lot? And then we get into uh, into cloud first, um, and uh, over 70% of, of companies um, uh, uh, claim to have a cloud first policy when it comes to running their IT. But what does that what does that really mean? Well, it means some of the things that we've just discussed that they they want to get out of the data center business. They want more of their their time and brain power focused on core business goals and delivering outcomes. Um, they want to convert some of that capex into opex, as we've already discussed. Absolutely massive. Um, they want to link IT spending to business divisions to see how profitable these divisions actually are. IT has become a, a huge cost, second only to staffing now, um, and it's significant in the in the profitability of a business division, a project, uh, a, a, a subsidiary, or whatever that's that's consuming it. And getting an a, getting an idea of who's consuming what is vital in order to be able to make decisions on what areas of the business are most profitable profitable and what areas demand the, the most investment. Um, 
we want to deploy new services and applications without having to wait for hardware to be to be installed. Uh, the days of uh, the days of six month timescales to set up new infrastructure for uh, a major new application. That's a thing of the past. Public cloud has driven a new level of expectation there. And we want to be able to compare cloud and on-premise infrastructure costs. We want to run workloads on the most efficient and suitable medium. We want to eliminate complex and time-consuming uh, capacity planning. Um, huge headache when uh, when planning new on-prem systems is actually predicting the future. None of us have got a crystal ball. Um, and, uh, we have to build capacity in in order to avoid these six-month timescales for adding more capacity when new business requirements come along. Uh, and as well as being a large and costly and uh, time-consuming and frankly quite quite arduous process, uh, capacity uh, capacity planning um, usually ends up with um, the wet finger going in the air and saying, "Oh well, let's allow 50% 50% for growth. That should cover all uh, all eventualities." Um, and in the vast majority of the cases, when we do that, we're we're provisioning compute and storage capacity that is never going to be used. Uh, that is going to sit there uh, idle, and we just spent a huge load of money on that. So uh, again, over provisioning waste, absolutely, absolutely huge in the in the in the adoption of a cloud first policy. Huge benefit, um, and of course we want to integrate those modern applications, containerized AI, uh, edge, and uh, and so forth, uh, and we want easy management of all billable surface uh, of all billable services the point is that if we deliver on everything that we've got here we have met the business requirements for a cloud first strategy but do any of these actually require our data to be in the cloud well let's have a look at it actually none of them none of them None of them do. We're talking about we're talking about operating models. We're talking about costing models. We're talking about management tools. We're talking about methodology here. We're talking about a more intelligent way of provisioning resources. None of these require the um, the uh, the data itself to be in the uh, to be in the cloud. So this is why we see today amongst companies that identify as having a cloud first policy to IT over all of them still have over half of their data outside of the uh, outside of the cloud. I mean in traditional IT some of these some of these requirements are met. Um, so Yes, we can we can get out of the data center by adopting colo. Uh, we can convert capex to opex uh, with leasing. Um, we can uh, um, linking IT spend to business divisions. Um, no, I mean that's a, that's a huge failing of um, of traditional IT. It's very very difficult to uh, to do. Special software is required. Um, extreme record keeping, uh, and a lot of a lot of organisations, particularly particularly those in the left and centre of that diagram we looked at earlier, um, don't do much in this area. So IT just becomes a, a general cost that's shared across the uh, the business, billing to individual divisions and, and, and projects. Uh, other than those cloud silos that we already that we already discussed, it's not something that goes on a lot. Um, we can deploy new services and applications without waiting for hardware, of course, by using the public cloud. Um, but this creates those cloud silos, which adds management headache. Um, we can compare cloud and on-premise infrastructure costs with special software, uh, but that software is still in its its infancy, and not a lot of companies are are using this. Um, and as for the other things, well, no, um, we're not going to be we're not we're, we're not going to be eliminating capacity planning if we're buying or leasing IT. We still have that capacity planning exercise. We're still crystal ball gazing. We're still looking uh, looking at trying to predict future activity in the business, which we just can't do. So. Uh, with GreenLake, uh, we can. And um, and how does it how does it do that? 
Well, GreenLake is HP storage and server hardware that is deployed exactly as present um, to your own premises, to a colo center or your choice of hosting providers. Um, it retains all the benefits of the on-prem uh, on -prem hardware and retains all the same management tools that you're already using. So PowerShell, uh, Ansible, vCenter, SCVMM, whatever you're using to manage your environment today, um, you retain that. But it swaps it for uh, a 100% OPEX model that is indexed to your usage. So you decide upfront what units of measure you want to be built on. So that could be containers, that could be VMs, it could be gigabytes of storage, it could be gigabytes of, of memory in compute solutions. Uh, it's all agreed upfront. A baseline is established, um, which makes up uh, a monthly fee. And then everything above that is usage related. So if you're only using your system lightly, you pay the base reservation fee. If you're using it more heavily, consuming more VMs, consuming more gigabytes, um, then there are usage fees exactly like the, uh, the public cloud. But this is this is on-prem or colo or hosted. Remember, this this doesn't require you to move your data and uh, and hand the uh, the crown jewels to a uh, to a third-party company. You keep that data exactly where you want it. You keep that processing exactly where you where you want it, um, and you get continual monitoring and capacity management with GreenLake Central. And this is what um, GreenLake uh, uniquely does, uh, is have this intelligent AI-backed capacity management tool behind it to help you minimize your over-provisioning spend with GreenLake Central, which is their, their web-based uh, web portal that does this. The equivalent solutions with uh, with Dell, with IBM, uh, with with Cisco, uh, are nowhere near as advanced, um, and don't provide the detail consumption analytics that we get across private and public cloud. Um, and of course, because it's HP server and storage hardware, you're backed by HP InfoSight, um, AI-based proactive support, everything that you would get with a bought on-prem solution. So it's the best of both worlds, um, or certainly one step closer to it. You move to a cloud-based consumption model while still retaining the uh, still retaining the compute and the storage um, on-prem or in your in your hosting provider. So here's what HP GreenLake isn't. Um, it's not an asset purchase. There's no there's no capex. There's no inflated first month's payment. It's a it's a flat reservation fee paid over the length of the term. Uh, and three, four, and five month terms are available. Um, it's uh, it's not leasing either because the spend is indexed to usage it's not a, fl a flat finance uh, a spread of the of the cost so whereas leasing has played uh, uh, has played a huge part in in helping companies maintain that liquidity and in addition to that we've had special financing schemes that the vendors have been doing because of the pandemic uh, leasing has been hugely useful uh, to uh, to thousands of companies work work worldwide uh, in the past in the past year this goes one step further by actually linking to usage so if you're not using the capacity you don't pay for it even though it's there ready and waiting um, for you to use on-prem uh, you're not paying for what you're not using it's not managed hosting so you're not forced to locate the servers with with HP um, it's it's not like the, uh, the the kind of solutions that we saw from uh, from Rackspace and, and IBM and HP you know eight or nine years ago where you could have a, a hybrid tin and, and cloud solution but you had to take your hosting with with them you are free to host the uh, you are free to host the hardware wherever you want so that can be on-prem it can be in a co-location center or it can be with your existing hosting hosting provider. HP don't care. 
it's not a platform a, a, as a service. Um, you're not getting given a, a limited functionality portal to interact with your uh, with your systems. Uh, you get the full fat experience with vCenter, uh, with SCVMM, and all the all the admin tools that you're already that you're already using. Full admin access, uh, nothing nothing restricted, no passwords retained, nothing taken away. Uh, and by the same token, it's not outsourcing. HP do offer uh, a, a, a support solution that can be built on top of GreenLake, uh, HP GreenLake services, um, but you're not forced to take that. That's an option. You can continue with your, your same internal support teams. You can continue with your same outsourcing providers uh, for supporting the, the hardware. And because it is standard HP hardware, there's no retraining, um, retooling, or renegotiation to, uh, to do that. And of course, there's no minimum. Uh, there's no minimum commitment to uh, to deploy your workloads on uh, on GreenLake. Um, there's no penalty to uh, to not doing so. Uh, you have the freedom to deploy your workloads uh, to GreenLake or to your choice of public cloud or even on a on another system. Completely, completely up to uh, up to you. Uh, so this is an overview slide um, of, uh, of what Green, Green Lake is. So we've got the infrastructure, which is HP factory built uh, infrastructure, servers, storage, which is um, uh, the, uh, the the software, the virtualization software. So Hyper-V, ESX, uh, ESXi um is all is all installed pre-installed and ready to go ready to go for you your v center is all pre-installed and uh and ready to go that's handed over and that's your new virtualization system and that but the advantage is on top of that you get a cloud gateway and all your green lake monitoring and management tools uh, which sit across that and allow you to manage your private infrastructure and your cloud infrastructure as one. It breaks down those uh, it breaks down those silos, and we're going to have a look at that in a little bit more uh, more detail. Um, so we get a cloud management portal where we can where we can. Um, manage uh self-service so we can allow our business divisions to provision provision vms containers uh as they need uh internal development teams to provision resources as they need uh they get we get full administration over our private and public cloud including the plans and pricing um access integrations and so on and we have NSX networking out of the box to be able to extend our on-prem um, our on-prem environment into the into the public cloud seamlessly. Uh, we get some automation in there as well as you would expect. So this is a quick look at the, the HP GreenLake Central Portal. This is the default the default dashboard that you that you get. And when you when you onboard with GreenLake, this is all you get a utility delivery manager who becomes part of your account team and works with you to set this up. So this is customized to your uh, to your environment and it tracks your monthly monthly spending, the baseline fee. Um, uh, and the, uh, the usage charges. And behind this, there's an appliance that sits on your on your GreenLake servers, which monitors your chosen unit of measure. So that could be consumption of servers, consumption of, uh, of VMs, consumption of containers, consumption of RAM or storage gigabytes. It will pull in all of that data and it will send every 24 hours an average of, of uh, several hourly measurements of what you've been what you've been using across your predefined divisions so you can cut your system up into different business divisions and different functions and it will track those uh, individual individually so you can see your consumption not just at a company level but at, at a division and project level as well uh, which is hugely significant and unique to to GreenLake, you can also track your um, your on-prem, your GreenLake spend, um, along with your cloud spend. So you can onboard 
uh, your Azure account, you can onboard your AWS account and it will actually show you this, this pie chart, which is drill downable, um, that shows you what proportion of your, of your monthly IT spend is on your, is on your private systems and what proportion is on uh, Azure, what proportion is on AWS, uh, what, what proportion is on Google uh, and further cloud providers are going to be added, uh, added later. You can manage your spend, um, and this is where you see the uh, the, um, the the value provided here by the elimination of over provisioning waste. So we typically provision 10% um, overhead, as opposed to the sort of 40 to 50% that we typically see with bought on-prem systems. And the reason we can do that is because your usage is being continually monitored by HP, and you have monthly meetings with your UDM who will flag any any issues with capacity for just-in-time upgrades of your hardware to be able to continue to cope um, with increased processing trends. Likewise, if your processing load is going down, um, then no upgrades are necessary and you haven't over-provisioned a, uh, a whole load of resource. Um, and as, uh, as I say, this, this is data that is updated daily with live information from your, your systems. So there's no guesswork, there's no guesstimation. Uh, this is all driven by actual actual data. And you can see how it's changed uh, historically. So when the time comes up to renew your HP GreenLake um, contract, you've got this wealth of Intel available um, to you on deciding um, how to provision uh, your, your hardware going forward. Um, this is something that we've been looking for in, in on-prem for, for years and we just haven't had. Uh, now we do with, with GreenLake. Uh, as I said, you can onboard your cloud accounts, so you can go with, uh, with Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google, uh, GCP, uh, integrate your cloud stats into GreenLake Central, so you don't, you're not reliant on looking across two tools to compare your your cloud usage with your uh, with your GreenLake usage. It's all in the same interface, and you get this nice pie chart, which then drills out into um, uh, into actual spends by business division, by cloud platform, um, uh, by service. Uh, by region uh, as well, if you're using cloud across multiple multiple re regions, so it's all your all your on-prem spend, all your cloud spend in a single pane of in a single pane of glass. So you can see here as uh, as an example, we're uh, we're running a, a VM as a service on Green Lake, um, and we've got a, a monthly cost here. So we can see at a glance what all of our uh, all of our departments are consuming, regardless of whether that's on prem or in the cloud. Um, and um, this is this up till now has been the the, the silver bullet of hybrid hybrid cloud. How do you tell? Um, whether a workload is more cost efficient to run in the cloud or on-prem. Well, HP GreenLake Central shows you and uh, you could actually run what-if scenarios and uh, take a VM that's running on GreenLake or um, uh, in the cloud and see what it would cost if you were running it on one of your other deployment options. So what would this cost if I moved it from GreenLake to AWS? Uh, what would it cost if, if I moved this back from AWS into, uh, into, uh, into GreenLake onto my private infrastructure? structure would I get a saving there would I get a saving by moving this from Azure to AWS or back again um, and you can run all of these all of these scenarios so you can potentially save your business thousands by making sure that all your workloads are running in the most cost effective place this is huge uh, I mean this is this is something that um, you've got to employ special software to do with traditional IT and even then you don't get this kind of coverage. 
Um, so you can get a full optimization on your on your spend uh, by looking at um, by aggregating all these what if scenarios. So you can see if you move large amounts of workload to the cloud or back from cloud to on prem, repatriated it. Um, what your yearly, um, uh, monthly or yearly savings would would be. Ready made reports for you to take to business leadership. So capacity management we've already covered, where we can run our systems much leaner, maintain a smaller over-provisioning buffer, where our utilization is continually monitored. And as I say, you get this UDM that joins your account team, who is dedicated to, uh, to capacity planning uh, your, uh, your GreenLake solution. So that's the overview on Green light. Just going to have a look. We haven't got any questions yet, so I hope I've conveyed accurately what Green Lake is is all about. So just to finish up, a little bit about converged infrastructure and HCI. Um, HP uh, DHCI is now easier to deploy and manage. Manage. We have one one click setup for DHCI. Uh, so DHCI is a is a packaged uh, package software defined data center. Um, those who are familiar with V blocks and um, flex pods will be very familiar with with what DHCI is. It's HP's version of the same thing. Combination of best in class servers uh, and uh, nimble storage um, packaged as a as a solution um, with a one click setup uh, gives you gives you your V center and the ability to uh, deploy your VLANs and your uh, your storage and your your VMs as you as you see fit without lots of uh, time consuming um, planning and integration work prepackaged solutions you choose the uh, how, how how much processing capacity you need you choose how much RAM you need you choose how many VMs you're going to want to run what's running on them and how many gigabytes of storage you need and HP do the rest uh, so uh, so um, hugely useful. Uh, solution for uh, for companies who don't have the time for building extensive IT systems. Um, VVOLs are now the preferred approach to uh, to VMware storage on Nimble. That's a strategic direction they're they're taking there. So they're putting uh, they're putting some of their clout behind VVOLs and we're gonna do another webinar on that uh, in the coming months. Um, HP Cloud Volumes Backup is now being fully integrated into all of their products, so DHCI, uh, SimpliVity, um, and we can now use um, Cloud Volumes Block as a replication target for Nimble and DHCI, which is obviously based on Nimble Storage as, uh, as well. So DR into the cloud comes out of the box with HP storage solutions now. Um, uh, it's nimble only at the moment, um, but this feature is going to be added for uh, for Primera with a software update uh, in the coming 12 months. Uh, Primera, of course, has replaced uh, 3PAR uh, as the uh, uh, HP's um, prime storage uh, offering. Uh, scale out storage offering. Um, so when we talk about Primera, this is the uh, the three par uh, the three par replacement. Um, so DHCI, SimpliVity, um, and Primera and Nimble, of course, uh, are all backed with HP Infosight and the full AI driven proactive uh, proactive support. Uh, that we've already discussed. And Nimble Storage, because it has um, some improvements in InfoSight behind it, now offers a six nines availability uh, guarantee, which is uh, basically seconds every year when it comes to the availability of your of your data. Never before seen in a, in a mid-tier uh, storage solution. So significant development there. Uh, and HP Cloud Volumes um, really warrants uh, really warrants a presentation all to its uh, all to itself, uh, and uh, we'll see if we can organise one again over the uh, over the coming weeks to go into more detail on this on this exciting product. But it basically acts as HP's gateway to the cloud, so it gives you somewhere where you can offload data, be that um, live data, backup data, data requiring analytics, into the cloud, where it can then be uh, accessed by 
um, modern applications that you have running in AWS or uh, or Azure. Uh, so what you can do is you can use the integration in SimpliVity, Nimble, um, or in any backup product to back your data up to uh, to a cloud volumes block, and that data can actually then be used to drive um, AI-driven insights, uh, analytics, uh, and reporting in the uh, in the cloud. Uh, so, uh, so all these exciting products out there now doing data lakes and uh, driving all sorts of insights about your business um, uh, from that data um, is now uh, is now accessible. Um, uh, as a native data transfer for uh, for any backup product um, or for uh, for any HP storage product. So um, any any uh, backup solution that can use a catalyst-based target um, can back its data up to cloud volumes now. So that is uh, Data Protector, that is um, Commvault, that is um, uh, uh, the um, Veritas Net, Net Backup, that is Veeam. Uh, all of the, the big backup products out there at the moment support this, and a lot of the more minor ones do as well. So anything that can support a catalyst target can back up its data to uh, to cloud volumes. So you have your you have your um your potential tape replacement right there, uh, as well as a source for uh, for your analytics. Um, and uh, and processing, and no additional software is required. You don't have to invest in a store once agent or VMs to sit on your uh, your infrastructure. It's all supported. Uh, it's all supported natively. And the best thing about it is there's no ingress or egress charges to cloud volumes. So you can transfer your data to and from as as much as you like. You only pay for uh, for what you use. And it has three tiers. Uh, you have a, a block storage, which can be used for, for live DR or uh, uh, or data storage. You have a dedicated backup tier, uh, and you also have HP Cloud Bank, which can uh, which can offload um, infrequently accessed data to your choice of archiving medium. So Azure Archive tier or AWS Glacier, uh, you can move your your data on the uh, on the back end. And this is where Ultima are offering, uh, along with HP, um, uh, a special offer uh, for the next uh, for the next couple of months of a free 90-day trial for HP Cloud Volumes up to uh, to 10 terabytes. So all of you who are um, looking at potentially replacing tape with cloud um, for your for your archiving uh, and your backups. Um, this is the time to do it because uh, HP is supporting uh, free trials, 90-day trials on cloud volumes uh, with no obligation, uh, which, as I say, can be integrated into any major any major backup uh, backup product. So, uh, so if you've been discussing uh, moving moving your data, your backup data to the cloud, or the archive copy of your data to the cloud, maybe you need a second copy off-site. Maybe you want to get rid of tape because accessing data centers has become more difficult with all the restrictions uh, around the pandemic. Uh, maybe you just want your data in the cloud to ransomware proof yourself just in case all of your, uh, all of your hardware gets taken down by malicious attack. Um, this can address all of those concerns and as I say, free for, free for 90 days for you to try out. Uh, using your existing your existing software, and we at Ultima are offering some free consultancy in certain cases to help you integrate that and get it get that trial set up. So contact your account manager uh, if you're interested, and we'll get something sorted out for you. Uh, and that's it. Uh, a lot of material to cover in a short space of time. We we were trying to condense a, a four day uh, a four day seminar into an hour. I've just about done it with two minutes over. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. Uh, at this point, um, last chance for questions. Go ahead.
Okay, all good then. A um, lot of information to assimilate in a short space of uh, space of time. Uh, but we hope that today's webinar will, will help to encourage some some conversations about hybrid cloud and the OPEX model and uh, and bringing some synergy there between your on-prem systems and the uh, the public cloud. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions that you think of, feel free to email me. The uh, My email address is uh, is on screen and uh, a copy of this presentation will be will be shared with you uh, after the webinar. So once again, thank you for listening and have a great day.